Hi, I'm Kelly Wallace, and welcome to Eye to Eye, Katie's on assignment. On January 20th, Professor Elizabeth Alexander will join the ranks of Robert Frost, Miller Williams, and Maya Angelou, becoming only the fourth poet to read at a presidential inauguration. Byron Pitt spoke to Alexander about what the honor means in light of this historic event. Are you, are you excited? Are you nervous? I mean, what's, what's, what's this moment mean for you? I am quiet. I'm trying to be very, 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 very quiet. I am excited. I am thrilled. Um, I'm trying not to be nervous because I don't think that nerves would be at all helpful. Certainly, nerves would not have been helpful preparing to compose the poem, trying to undertake that enormous task of serving the moment, but also hopefully finding language that could live beyond the moment. Um, I'm very humble because this day means so much to so many millions of people people who are with us, people who are no longer with us. So I'm humble and respectful before all of that because that just seems tremendously, tremendously uh, mammoth uh, to me. Um, and I'm kind of amazed, um, amazed that we've come to this day, uh, amazed that I will be some small part of it, all of those things. You're now the fourth person ever mm -hmm. uh, and the legendary names that you follow your thoughts about that? Well, what's interesting is that uh, along with many other poet friends of mine, we all assumed that there was a much longer tradition. It feels as though there should be a poem at the inaugural ceremony. It, we know about those famous people and those, you know, iconic stories of Robert Frost, the paper blowing in the wind, the glittering white snow. Of course, so many people remember Dr. Maya Angelou's poem, uh, Miller Williams's poem. So, it's really not yet a tradition. I hope that it will continue to become a tradition even as we think back to those monumental um, performances and poems. Speaking of Frost, what's your backup plan in case something goes wrong on stage on Tuesday? I will have many copies tucked away. Is that right? Yes, I will. In a pocket? I will have them. I will have them and I will be able to access them if necessary. But I don't think anything will go wrong. Talk about the, the, the context of this moment. Uh, I mean, certainly it, it is an honor in and of itself that, that you were chosen to do this. But the sort of um, your own connection to history, your family's history with what happened uh, near that very spot 40 years ago and, and what you'll be a part of. Well, my, my family, um, back many generations, but speaking particularly about my parents and even more particularly about my father, have devoted their work to the cause of civil rights, to providing more and better opportunities for more people. Um, my father was a civil rights advisor to President Johnson, was the first head of the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, um, has really worked all of his life to move America forward. Um, particularly when it comes to issues of equality and equal opportunity. They took me when I was one to the March on Washington. Um, I'm sure that at that time there was nothing extraordinary about that because, of course, if you were a committed person who cared about justice, of course you would go. Of course you would hear Dr. King. Of course you would march. Things needed to change. But throughout the years, that became a very important and iconic story in our family, a, a way of saying, this is what you do when you think that things should be better for other people. You act, you work, you serve, you march, you do and contribute what you have to contribute. So that's what that story always meant to me. So, you know, the day after Dr. King's birthday, to be in that very spot, and for me also to be in the great city that I grew up in, um, is is going to be very powerful. Where should we look to gleam something, um, preview some sense of what you will say on Tuesday? <laughs> there is no preview. <laughs> um, but I think what you would see uh, in my work, uh, at, and in all of my work actually, is a tremendous interest in the historical, an interest in the voices of people who some, sometimes have not had their say in history, whose stories have been distorted or silenced. Uh, I have found that poetic exploration is a way that I can sometimes imaginatively s play with some of those historical stories and not so much set the record straight, but let us hear from voices that we don't always get to hear from. Um, that Maybe that sensibility is something that is at the heart of what I do and that um, underpins how I might be, be speaking on Tuesday.